passed four. Okay, thank you. So yeah, we'll talk about uh, partitioning and uh, uh, doing it a uh, better way in Postgres 10. I am Amit Langode. Uh, I work at NTT OS Center, and uh, here is Ashtosh Bapat, who works for Enterprise DB. We'll be doing you know uh, this uh, talk uh, like half and half. So yeah, let's begin. So the outline, uh, general outline, is I'll be talking uh, uh, on uh, the first few points, and then Ashtosh will take over. So uh, we have a, a declarative partitioning in Postgres 10. So I'll describe uh, the feature, uh, uh, the basic feature. Then I'll uh, show some examples just for illustration and uh, some limitations. And uh, then I'll uh, try to explain a little bit uh, how the new partitioning is different from the old way of doing partitioning, which is using inheritance. Uh, then some time will be spent. Uh, talking about why the new way is, sounds kind of promising, uh, why it will uh, kind of open up opportunities for uh, doing things better. And then Ashtosh will talk more specifics about how uh, those uh, new things will be better. So yeah, so yeah, well, Postgres 10 has declarative partitioning. And uh, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, so what does it provide yet? What does uh, uh, partitioning feature does uh, at this point? Uh, what what you can do with Postgres 10? So we have native support for doing range and uh, list partitioning, which are pretty common uh, partitioning uh, uh, used in um, you know uh, regular workloads. Uh, the next thing it does is it provides a, a fast way of doing tuple routing. If, uh, in the old uh, methods or before uh, this partitioning, you would write uh, triggers, and uh, it wasn't as fast uh, as the, the new one is. And we have uh, uh, dedicated commands for doing partition rollout, roll which is uh, pretty nice to, thing to have. We can do multi-level partitioning so that you can build uh, kind of uh, multi-level partition trees and the way, uh, any way you want. Uh, it's just like the way inheritance allows you to create an arbitrary, uh, uh, arbitrarily deep uh, partitioning hierarchies. One more thing is we can create partitions as foreign tables. Just a few talks ago, I, we talked about uh, how sharding uh, benefits from uh, uh, the, having declarative partitioning the, that in that uh, we can, you can create partitions as foreign tables so that your partitions can uh, 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 rest on uh, different servers. And well, I mean, because we ha have all these features, uh, we can say that we have significantly improved usability for uh, with the new partitioning. And I've seen like many times written uh, in the mailing lists or on the internet, like it's hard to do uh, partitioning with Postgres or it's kind of cumbersome to do partitioning with Postgres. So, and I think the new feature uh, kind of uh, helps in that. Uh, to kind of ease that out. So some quick examples. I just mentioned that we can do range and list partitioning. So how does it look like? So uh, for example, uh, you want to create a range partition table. Uh, you have an orders table. And uh, 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 naturally, it, you can partition it on the dates, uh, order dates. So you just say partition by range on the column, which is order date. And then you create the, just like you would create a child table, you create a partition uh, using a separate command. And you'll specify uh, four values. So you specify you know, which values you want to create the range partition for. And then you know, nothing, uh, nothing else to do. You just, uh, you just have uh, a partition table and one partition. So you can now insert uh, uh, data that that partition can take. So yeah, you, you can see like uh, the insert works. And then you can see that you know, the, the data is in uh, where it is supposed to be, uh, that is in the partition that we just defined. And if you try to insert uh, some data that you, don't create, uh, you, did, you didn't create a partition for, then you'll get an error like you know, no partition of relation orders found. So there is no uh, kind of like automatic uh, creation of partitions or you know, some, like putting that value somewhere else. Uh, the one more thing you can do is you can uh, attach an existing table uh, to, a, uh, to a partition table. So 
uh, you can create a table, you can load data and attach to the existing partition table. What I'll show in this example is uh, something, uh, something more. So you can create a partition table, and uh, you can create its partitions, and you can uh, attach this partition table to the, the main partition table that we had created. So uh, what this shows is you can create a, a multi-level partition table, and uh, uh, well, this attach uh, partition command shows like you know you can take a table, uh, partitioned or not, and attach it to the uh, partition table. And once this command is done, you have that partition as part of the main partition table. And now you can see that you know when once you insert uh, data, it, it goes into the new partitions that you just defined. Yeah, yeah. So you created a partition table and attached is a, it as a partition. So now it's part of the partition tree. Uh, so one partition you had, it, it, it wasn't partition. It was just a, a simple table. It was a leaf partition. And you cre created a partition table, and you, you attached. So you have like two levels now, right? So. Uh, then you can see like the, the data he just entered. Uh, so. The first partition is, you know, the level one leaf partition, and the other two partitions are the partitions of the table that, that we just attached. And uh, you can see that, you know, uh, partition pruning works. If you try to select uh, uh, in a range, then it will just scan the partitions that the query asks for. And yeah, you can look at, you know, how the partition schema looks like. For example, uh, you try to describe the partition you'll see that you know, this is a partition of uh, the table and it shows the values. It shows the constraint. Sometimes you might want to see what kind of constraint the uh, uh, planner or whatever is looking at when dealing with a partition. So you can look at that, uh, the exact constraint here. And one more command is uh, uh, detach partition. It's just a rollout. You, just, you can either just drop it. I didn't. Uh, right, the drop command. You can either drop a partition just by saying drop table, the partition name, and it just goes away from the table, or you can. Uh, it will be gone. Like it's like just doing a, a drop table. Drop table. Uh, your partition is a table, so you, you, if you say drop table, then that partition of data is gone. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I was just yeah, I mean, yeah. Remove from the, the so yeah. The data is still there. Yes. It's still there. It's not just not right, right. So, so it's not part of that partition tree anymore. It remains as the uh, the table. The, the the table name remains same, and you can use it the table any way you want after that point. It's just not part of the original partitioning tree. So once you detach, you can see like you know you you don't have that as part of the orders table anymore. And what does it not provide? Maybe uh, some of you were <laughs> at the end conference on partitioning, what next session, and we discussed a big list of things where, that we would like to do with partitioning. So anyway, so Postgres 10, okay. cannot <laughs> Postgres 10 cannot create indexes on partition tables because we don't have multi-table indexes, or, or nor can we you know, create an index on parent table and have it propagate, uh, the definition propagate to the partitions. So we have neither of those at the moment. On the, yeah, 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 yes. right. So you can create indexes on individual tables, unique or whatever, but you cannot create uh, uh, index on a partition table. It could be anywhere. It could be root table. It could be an intermediate partition table. Uh, if it's partition, then you cannot create an index. Right, right. On. Yeah, you can use uh, unbounded uh, literal value, which means just don't. There is no bound in this direction. It could be in left or you know minus infinity or plus infinity. Right, because yeah. Yeah, you will fa face problems later. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it could be reasonable. I mean, if you're partitioning your transactions by transaction amount, having one table per transaction amount, so a tr 
trillion dollars all the way up to infinity could be entirely yeah. Uh, I think there is no way to split or merge. Maybe you might want to call it split a partition so that, do you, do you mean like splitting, merging? You, you could imagine uh, enlarging the bounds of a partition in place, right? in, uh, as long as there's no overlapping partition. Right. Shrinking a partition and scanning it to make sure that all the values actually in it are right, in right, right, right. We just don't have commands. For commands for that. Because the commands will do all the, you know, yeah, whatever, due diligence. <laughs> Uh, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> okay, so more limitations. You cannot create uh, partitions are not created automatically for the data that's for, for which you didn't define a partition. Nor is there a default partition, which is a catch-all partition, which takes data for which there is no partition with uh, defined boundaries. So yeah, these are missing things. And uh, if you try to update the partition key of, uh, for, of rows, and uh, in case that makes uh, uh, some row to move to a new partition, you will get an error, because there is no mechanism to move a row from, from one partition to another, because of, you know, we didn't write the patch for that, or it didn't make Postgres 10. Amit, there is a question. Ah, yeah. sorry. Right, right, right. Yes, this will work, yeah. But what, uh, yeah, it works, it works. I, I won't say other things in you know, the caveat that, that there might be, but <laughs> <laughs> it works. Modulo bugs. Well, I don't know. So, uh, and one more thing is, oh, sorry. No, the moving part hasn't been implemented, so we'll get an error. There, no. no, 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 no. You'll get an error. You can't, you can't do an update. You'll get an error. Mm. The update doesn't change with the partition it wraps to. Yeah. But rather, no, if, you range, if, it range, if you range partition by year and you try to change it from May to June, yeah. it'll be like, that's cool. That's if cool, yeah. If you try to change it to next year, it'll be like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> but the partition constraint is a constraint. <laughs> and it's enforced. Uh, you cannot route tuples to foreign partitions. There is no code for that. So you'll get an error. If you have a, tab uh, t a partition which is you know, foreign, foreign table, then and the ro your row lands into that partition, you'll get an error. Sorry, can't push it to the, you know, uh, in to the foreign table. So it's a limitation. And well, uh, as we just uh, just mentioned, uh, you cannot redefine a partition's boundary, so you cannot be splitting and merging partitions. So yeah, it's a big list. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, uh, we can talk a little bit about how does it relate to inheritance, or how completely different is it from inheritance, or you know how. So one thing is, you know, partitioning is really a subset of the inheritance model as far as the uh, general, uh, like, schema design is concerned. But partitioning uh, makes you, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it imposes uh, more constraints on the schema design. So you cannot add uh, columns to the child tables or partitions. Or, so you might find that limiting, but, you know, it's uh, designed for certain reasons. And uh, of course, because you provide more information, uh, uh, then, uh, because you pr provide this, uh, if, if you saw the commands, you'll see that you know it provides more information to the system than uh, what check constraints or whatever would would. And one more thing is currently the new partitioning uses the same optimizer code as used to perform inheritance planning, so there is no new optimizer code doing anything special with partition tables. So. It suffers, the new partition tables suffer the same problems, the planner problems, as the uh, inheritance problems. So Postgres 10 doesn't solve anything in that area. Uh, and because, I mean, uh, kind of future, like, uh, uh, futuristic statement, like, because new partitioning offers information about partitioning in a more suitable format than using inheritance, it makes possible to implement faster algorithms in the planner, or it uh, makes it possible to 
create entirely new kinds of plans like partition wise planning uh, which Ashutosh will talk about you know in a moment and yeah as, as I just said why why is declarative partitioning promising you know so you may have seen like put on on the mailing list people saying you know we don't have declarative partitioning so well uh, it's not going to get faster until we have that. So people have been saying th that for years. And but more seriously, uh, w with uh, declarative partitioning, we have a base. Uh, we have uh, this infrastructure so that people can write more patches, so that you know you can get uh, better uh, optimization performance and well p better performance in all uh, respects. For example, uh, the kinds of Optimizer, uh, optimizer enhancements that are possible are uh, uh, you can create, uh, you can push an SQL query down to partitions, which is not possible right now. You have to do the joins and aggregations on, on the parent table after you have uh, combined all of the partitions data and uh, doing big joins and doing big aggregations, it doesn't scale or whatever. With the new partitioning, you can push all those uh, complex operations down to partitions uh, and you know have better plans per partition, yeah, which again Ashutosh will talk more about and besides the optimizer, uh, we have a potential for improvements in other areas of, of back end code where having large number of tables in the system uh, stresses the different parts like locking or uh, you know the caching. Uh, we can probably address those issues now that we have partitioning, so that you might be able to see, you know, uh, better performance overall, uh, optimizer, and then we have also uh, improve performance for locking or you know uh, caching. And mm, sorry. Yes, that's that's the gist of yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Inserts are. Yes. But like a planning of which partition you go to for configuration. Yeah, that stuff's that's not bad. There. Okay. Right. In, including copy in? Okay. Yeah, copy, yeah. That's also like maybe a bit doesn't want to tune his own horn, so I'll tune it for him. <laughs> it's a lot faster. <laughs> it is unbelievably faster. It is earth faster. <laughs> yeah, it is that fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's it's a little bit slower. It's yeah. not a hundred times. It's not a hundred times slower. Either. Yeah, there was a, there was a, the one stat I saw somebody put out. It, it was like a, a, lo a load on a normal table for like a, a million rows took like about a half a second or something like that. Yeah. With the normal trigger way, it took about thirty seconds. Thirty like seconds. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Oh, it was like huge, huge. Yeah. Slower, mm -hmm. yeah, and his, his testing showed 15 to 30 percent, depending on the number of partitions, which is right, something. Right. And maybe we can optimize that in the future, so it's even better. But yeah. it's just light years ahead of where we were before with triggers. Patches, welcome. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. PG Partman, yeah, PG Partman <laughs> for the win. <laughs> okay. okay. So I think the next part is my friend Ashtosh. Yeah. Okay, and okay. This goes here. So uh, what, I mean, uh, 
I think five years before or even before that, if you search for partition-wise join, there are not many papers available. And the two or three papers that are available were based on PostgreSQL. And the author of those papers had posted to hackers saying that this is a cool way of joining partitions. And that was uh, shot, not shot down, but it was the patch was re rejected because it was very difficult with inheritance to match the partition, which is an essential operation for partition-wise join. And what we are going to see with the declarative partition, now that's not anymore uh, that complex. And we'll see what all the new declarative partition offers in terms of uh, query optimizations. So you could, you could do partition-wise join, aggregation, sorting, set operation, almost every operation that you have in SQL would have a partition-wise equivalent, uh, which in, uh, I mean, given the right set of keys, it will be faster than uh, that the, the non-partition thing. So why, why are partition-wise operations uh, better? Or, or what is the, I mean, the, the important uh, philosophy behind the partition-wise operations is whatever operation, you push the operation down to the partition, individual partition. So if it's uh, sorting, you you'll sort the data at the partition level and then gather it. Um, similarly, joins and uh, aggregates. Now, why does it improve performance? Because uh, somebody asked, can we create indexes on the partition table right now? We don't. The indexes are on individual partitions. And if you push operations down to the partitions, you can then use those indexes, uh, indexes which is not directly possible with a partition table. You have to uh, have some kind of you know, merge up in uh, there without those. Then you could, with big tables, you need algorithms which can tackle large data, whereas when you do the same operations at the level of partitions, you could use better algorithms, faster algorithms, which can work with smaller data. And we'll see some examples. We have now parallel query. And what partitioning offers is allowing one worker per partition. So uh, since each of the partition is an independent unit of data, you could assign one worker for that partition and then let all those workers run in parallel so that uh, you can take advantage of the inherent parallelism that partition offers. We have talked about this in the sharding talk that we have FDW pushdowns, we have partitions, uh, which can be foreign tables. Now, what, what combine these two together, and what can happen is a join can be completely executed on the foreign server. An aggregate can be completely executed on the foreign server. So that and that's a lot faster uh, as we'll see soon and then an important thing is eliminate the data from the pruned partition so if you have a very big table where the data is in the blocks dispersed across the table and you have a you have some condition and it's a sequential scan it has to go through each block scanning for the rows there is no way that you can say okay this set of blocks I don't want to scan because it does not have the rows that would qualify. But with partitions, uh, if, if there is a condition on the partition key, we can eliminate the whole relations, which is equivalent of just eliminating uh, chunks of blocks away. Um, so let's start with uh, partition pruning. Uh, we already have partition pruning using constraint exclusion. But what declarative partition offers is much more straightforward way of doing it. Uh, imagine that this, this, you, this is an inheritance case. Then the partition one would, would have a constraint saying that C1 less than C1 greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0, less than 100. Similarly, for a constraint on partition 2, constraint on partition 3. And there is a query which says, give me data where C1 is between 150 and 250. What constraint exclusion 
does is it it checks whether this condition uh, or rather this condition is contrary with any of the constraints here and wherever you can see the refute uh, it, it eliminates those partitions now that's uh, that works but it takes time and there is a whole lot code that that gets exercised behind the scene what declarative partitioning offers is a, a, a much simpler thing you just look at the bounds and see whether z whether there will be any row between 0 to 100 which will be also between 150 and 200 obviously the answer is no so by just looking at the uh, the values in the partition uh, i mean the partition bounds you could eliminate the part uh, eliminate partitions um, same case with an equi equality you can eliminate it e eliminate the partitions easily rather than checking at each partition why is that so much faster than just looking at the constraint definition what makes it easier to do it that way oh because uh, i mean a constraint in the, is an expression, whereas the bounds are just datums which you could compare, right? I mean, I, I'm going to compare 0, 100 with 150 and 250. That's much faster than saying that an expression C1 greater than or equal to 0 less than 100 is contrary to this expression, right? Yes, yes. Essentially, uh, do some sort of search, possibly a binary search for the first yeah. and last partitions that could have data, right? Yeah. So basically, yeah. Uh, the the thing about constraint exclusion is you have to go to each partition and see whether that has contrary constraint. But with bounds, you could arrange this in order and do a binary search. Take 150, do a binary search. Take 250, do a binary search, and uh, see where they overlap and eliminate. Uh, I don't have exact numbers right now, but I have seen that the planning time reduces almost by 50%. And uh, right now, it's, it increases linearly with the number of uh, partitions because we have some other things, like we open all the partitions, we create rail caches for them. Uh, but essentially, that, that time can reduce even further. Uh, any questions before I go to partition-wise joins? Now, partition-wise joins is is even more interesting because what we have, what we can see from here when T1 joins with T2 on this condition, that is the partition key, I can clearly see that partition 1, which has values between 0 and 100, None of those rows are going to join with anything in partition 2, which has values from 100 to 200. And same thing with partition 3. So it's only partition, any row in partition 1 can join only with the rows in partition 1, uh, partition 1 of the other table. So it's only the partitions with the same color that are going to produce any result in the join. And so I can convert this big join into a set of smaller joins and then plan each of these joins individually uh, and so, so uh, we, we reduce the number of possibilities that a row can join, a row from one table that can join to other table. Um, obviously, the ha if, if we are using ha has join for this big table, the hash table is going to be big. There will be batches that will be created. They will flow to the disk. But if partition, but there is a chance that hash table for partition one or partition two or partition three can fit in memory, and then you don't need all of that to happen. Quick question: This and the previous is this in V10 or this is future? This, this there are. Uh, 
okay, this is all future. We, we don't have a patch for this. Uh, we have a patch for this, which is uh, being discussed on hackers. Um, Yes, okay. Uh, right now the patch handles only equijoins, but I mean there are possibilities that you could use uh, partition-wise joins for other operators as well, but whether they will be optimal or not is not uh, very clear, but uh, depending upon the bounds, you could, ba basically the idea is eliminate the data that one partition here can join two on the other table. So the, the join operator has to be equals, and the partition definitions have to be exactly equal as well. The, the partition keys need to be say uh, need to be compatible, but um, the bounds need not be. Okay, so you can have on one side you could have like three partitions that cover the same range as one. Right. Partition. Uh, not even exactly lined up. You can, if, if I change the bounds slightly and say that the first is 0 to 150, second is um, 150 to 300, and third is 300 to 450 yeah. on one side. Second side, it's uh, 0 to 50, 200 to 300, and uh, 350 to 400. We could still match, we could still deduct that one partition on the, of T1 is going to join with one partition of T2. I mean, any row in one partition of T1 is going to join with only rows from one partition of T2. And then we can do a partition-wise join. So the original paper did talk about ganging partitions together, uh, but we are not implementing that uh, because of their, be, because there are infrastructure issues with PostgreSQL. We cannot create rail opt-in for for these ganged up partitions. Um, with the? Yeah, yeah. When I mean, when we'll in independently implement pruning and this thing, we'll have okay. the combined effect. Okay, but yeah. So basically, you would have a logic to be able to combine even a subset of, for example, like uh, uh, you would have a large set of partition by join, and you could still be able to select a subset of those partitions. Yeah. You have a little bit of a three by three. Most of most of it's in the middle, but there's a few stragglers on the edges. Yeah, yeah. We we, I mean, we we just talked about it. That that's the paper on partition wise join calls as ganging partitions, uh, but that has uh, some implementation problems when it comes to PostgreSQL. When because. Now we have to create an append relation for those partitions that we gang up, and then create a rail opt-in for for it. And uh, I mean, but yeah, I mean, we could do this with with enough releases down the line. We could <laughs> do that. Uh, okay, why partition-wise join uh, is. I mean, why, why partition-wise join should be implemented? Um, yeah, as I said that, so the first thing is the indexation 
indexes are available on the partition. So if you want to use indexes for, let's say, merge join, then it's better to have partition-wise join rather than the index can, then a merge append, and then a merge join on top of those. Um, similarly, what can happen is, depending upon the, the, the sizes of these partitions, their characteristics, I can say that the yellow partitions join using has join, the red ones use merge join, uh, blue ones use nested loop join, whichever is optimal for that set of partitions. And uh, instead of saying that I, I append all of them and use only one strategy for them, you could actually uh, take advantage of the localized properties of those. And one of the uh, good examples there is if, if those partitions are foreign partitions. Now, let's say if yellow partitions both happen to be on server one, red happen to be on server two, and the blue ones are local ones. We could tell server one that join these two tables at your side and give me the data, same thing for red, and then we locally join the blue partitions, which is again not possible if you append uh, all the data and then do the join. An interesting thing happens when we start working with smaller data. Uh, if you, for example, uh, a merge join between two big tables, uh, when you break it into uh, smaller partition-wise joins, they start using hash join. And then the, if that merge join requires sorting, then we eliminate that n log n factor that is required to sort the data and then instead use uh, hash, which is much faster. Similarly, we'll see an example where we replace hash or merge join with parameterized nested loop join because the outer relation has so small number of rows that you could actually do a parameterized nested loop join on the inner side. And as I said, then since each partition-wise join is an independent unit, you could execute it in a separate worker and thus get, uh, you know, linear uh, increase in, I mean, linear decrease in time. So here is an example where we have two tables, PRT1001, PRT1002, which both have 1,000 partitions. Each partition has 1 million rows, so there are total 1,000 million rows. And uh, they have an index. Now, if you try to join that with a with a condition there which reduces the data heavily uh, from the outer side, then if we, without partition-wise join, we append both the relations, hash one of them, and then try a join. Uh, on my laptop, it took like 1,000 seconds. But when you enable partition-wise join, each of those change to a nested loop join because then the outer side is way smaller, it, it just reduces by a thousand factor and you see a parameterized nested loop join taking advantage of the index on the partition. And then you, what, what used to take thousand seconds there now takes just 200 seconds, which is like five times faster uh, thing. Now this is without parallel query. Imagine this happening in parallel query and you can get a lot of performance. Yeah, so yeah, so the tot because you have to now plan for each of the thousand partition wise joins. So there was one join starting, and now we have like thousands. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, execution. Sorry. Yeah, so the yeah, yeah, yeah. execution time. Yeah. Uh, any questions up to this point? Um, a similar thing happens with partition-wise aggregation. Now, wh what we did with join, that we join the partitions, now we push down the, push the aggregate down to individual partitions. And it, it could work with partition-wise join there. 
So there can be a partition wise join underneath and then you have an aggregate step, that aggregate step pu gets pushed down to the uh, join between the partitions and we have uh, this whole big aggregation broken down into smaller aggregations. Uh, again, you can see that if this big thing required a merge join because, uh, because the hash table for aggregation did not fit in the work meme that was provided, um, now we can uh, use individual joins, I mean we can implement Im individual join, individual aggregations as hash aggregations because they now start fitting in, uh, in the memory. Uh, a, a slight, a slight uh, difference with partition wise join is here that for partition wise join you always require a condition on partition key and right now it is an equijoin. But partition wise aggregation does not require uh, the group clause necessarily on the, uh, on the partition key. If you have it, it is good because the whole aggregation can complete at the level of partitions. But if you do not have, we execute, we, we create partial aggregates at each level of partition and then combine it uh, at the end step. That still reduces performance because you do not have to, I mean not all the rows have to go through the append and then go through the operation of grouping. No, I didn't get your question. Yeah, I mean, just write the more complicated query with a subquery working only on the partition, like what you see on the right, and you use uh, query that has a loop at all those uh, queries within the week, so that it can complete. Subqueries, subplots. Yes, subqueries. So. If I understand right, your question is that with clause has subqueries which are using partition tables. Yeah, yeah. So actually, writing such a query from the application side is not painful, but you may not have to pay the planning time, and you may gain also. Oh, I, I, oh, okay. Uh, well, do that. Time as well, if you do that. Yeah, if you can do it for thousand partitions, writing thousand subqueries. Yeah, so my, my initial, my initial, so, so when I started working on partition wise join in order to see its feasibility, I mean whether it is worth it, I, I did that approach and it showed like 15 percent performance and when I implemented partition wise join and uh, did it with the whole partition table join, uh, it, it showed almost the same performance except for the planning time which okay, is it. So Yeah. Now, aggregates are even interesting uh, because the number of rows that come out of ag aggregation or grouping are way less than the actual rows that are aggregated. And here is an example that Jeevan Salke gave, uh, whose patch is uh, on hackers with, with a proposal for partition wise aggregation. Uh, he showed that. Uh, with a table, partition table with three foreign partitions. Now, he, here is an, uh, another example of how you can gain the performance. Uh, three foreign partition, each with one million rows, and the query just returns 30 rows, that is 10 rows per partition. Uh, the, with partition wise aggregation, we got seven times performance just because the instead of pulling all the rows, all the 3 million rows from the foreign server and aggregating them locally, it pulled just 10 rows from each of the servers, total of 30 rows. 
A and that itself gave a tremendous boost to the performance. Now, remember, we don't have asynchronous query here, which uh, we talked in the sharding uh, uh, presentation. And if we had that, this time is going to reduce by three, because those foreign scans are going to be executed in parallel, simultaneously, uh, each taking probably one third of the time. And so you get like, you know, even more like 21 times the performance. Well, you could, you could then think of this as you know, a, a strategy that almost every operation, if you try to push down to the partitions, um, it, it gets better. Uh, obviously, you have, I mean, the, the costing, planner costing tells us whether it's better or not. But uh, usually, it gets better. And same is the case with sorting. Now, uh, we could sort individual partitions. And if it happens that this order by clause has a partition key, what you, we, could, we can do is order those partitions by their bounds, if it's a range table, and then just forget about the merge append at the top of it. Because if you choose the right order of the partitions, you are going to get the data automatically ordered. Um, I mean, think about it. If it's on foreign server, get the data sorted from the foreign server, and the local server doesn't have to do anything uh, for it. So yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, we, we can go, go on and on and on. Like, we can do set operations. We could push subqueries. Then subqueries can have partitioned properties there. And then when they join the partition table, I think it, it's just, uh, you know, th there is no limit. Uh, to it if we have the right set of partition keys and the data. The key is, okay. Sorry. Now, the key is partition key. You, you need to have your data partitioned properly looking at the queries. Or if you already have partition table, then you, you, you can always see whether I can modify my queries so that they have clauses on partition keys. They have partition keys at the right places in the query. And then you can get really, really tremendous performance out of this setup. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's all I had to talk about. Question. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, let's take one one case at a time. <laughs> so we have a default partition as partition four on both sides. I can still deduct that no row from partition one is going to join with partition four. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or at least, uh, if I know that there is a matching partition, as long as each partition here has a m matching partition, yeah. I can deduct that it's not going to yeah. so join with the default partition. Yeah. But then having default partition there is, is not a good idea, because that can eliminate partition-wise join for real no reason. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Thanks.